Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Lynn Story, and my background is that I am a registered nurse, and I also uh, studied and did end up writing a dissertation on what's called archetypal imagery in near-death experience. So what I would like to do for the next 25 to 30 minutes is to talk about the archetypal expressions that occur in near-death events. To do that, I guess I should introduce archetypes. You experience them every day. They're definitely a part of you. It, they can be defined by, as, to dissect the word, art meaning first, and type meaning imprint or pattern or model. They are universal images images not used in terms of a word picture, but images that exist within each of us in what's called our collective unconscious. Now this is a term that was, that was coined by Swiss uh, psychology, a psychiatrist, Carl Jung, upon whose work uh, Jungian uh, psychology is founded. Uh, he coined the term in order to show the difference in our unconscious. We all have a personal unconscious. That's the area that, where we store our personal matters, uh, of the materials that we repress, or perhaps the materials that uh, elude us momentarily, such as the word or the idea that you can't think of when you're talking to a friend, but it pops very clearly in your mind later when you don't need it. Well, where was that idea? It was in your personal unconscious. But according to Carl Jung, we have a deeper level to our unconscious, and he calls that the collective unconscious. And that is the storehouse for the archetypes, the archetypes that we have in common with all of humanity. Uh, we don't necessarily access all of the archetypes in our lifetime, but for reasons that we don't understand, we do access some. And those archetypes are the ones uh, that are activated in, some of those archetypes are the ones that are activated in near-death events. And according to some people, such as Aldous Huxley, you out there who have had near-death events, have been plunged into the area of the collective unconscious and have encountered those archetypes. Now, archetypes uh, are numerous. They are archetypes for all kinds of life situations, uh, figures, and experiences. But the ones present in near-death events are primarily archetypal motifs or themes. In fact, there's a, a unique constellation of archetypes that continuously reappear in near-death events. And we will get to that. But right now, I just want you to know that Archetypes are a part of our psychic inheritance, that they all have always been a part of humanity, and that we know about them and can look at them uh, throughout, um, throughout history. Um, it's not a new concept. Uh, the archetypes were recognized before the common era. In antiquity, they were written about. Plato alluded to them, a person by the name of Philo Judaeus in the first century before the Common Era used the term imago dea, which means God image, as being within man. Uh, Irenaeus, a person who lived in a place called Lyons, wrote that the creator did not design the world, but copied them from the archetypes. And then fast forward to the early Christian era, and though there are still being references to the archetypes. Even St. Augustine referred to them as the principal ideas that are contained within the um, divine understanding. And there's another group of writings for that time period referred to God as the archetypal light. So given that we have always had archetypes in our unconscious, um, I'd like to posit at the very beginning that near-death experiences are not a new phenomenon. 
as was suggested last night in Jan Holden's presentation, near-death experiences, although not called that, can be traced back to very early to antiquity, uh, with, in fact, Plato describing the first near uh, the, an early near-death experience. That would have been four, about 400 BCE. And there are, there's collections of writings on medieval uh, near-death experiences, um, collections of writings in the mid-1800s on near-death experiences, and then we are all pretty familiar with the events of centering around 1950 to 1975 with all the researchers who, start, who started writing about this event that culminated in 1975 with Richard, uh, with Raymond Moody doing something different. He actually gave the phenomenon a name. And it was the act of naming that was quite important. Um, it seemed to galvanize the interests of the American public as well as interests of individuals who became uh, uh, important researchers uh, who have done a lot of work that indeed contribute to us being here today. Now, before I go into those specific archetypes that are present in near-death events, uh, I would like to describe uh, what one Jungian analyst has, has written about as being characteristics of an archetypal encounter. And as I go through these, you will notice that they are very similar, maybe identical, and they, indeed they are identical in some ways, with the um, characteristics of a near-death event. For example, um, according, to, according to Lionel Corbett, a union analyst, and also uh, draw, drawing heavily on the work of a person by the name of Rudolf Otto, um, the first description is that these events are ineffable. Um, they elude understanding in terms of concepts that, you know, that you can't put it into language. There is no language for what you have experienced. But you try and you come up with words that are, are what come to you at the time. It's definitely transpersonal, these archetypal encounters. They're beyond the sphere of what is usual, intelligible, or even familiar. It's filled with an energy that grips the soul. These encounters have a sense of awe and wonder about them, where one senses the presence of God or spiritual beings. There's a sense of reverence, a sense of the transcendence with a mystical quality and sublime. In Jungian terms, they would describe that as the meeting of the conscious and the unconscious aspects of who you are, producing a totality that is a very powerful event. Now, there is more to this description of these archetypal encounters, and that more represents the opposite of what I just read. And that can be described uh, as it, these archetypal encounters can and do contain a wild and demonic side and can sink one into almost grisly horror with a shuddering as if a sudden eruption from the depths of the soul. Does that not sound like a fearful near-death event? In fact, uh, as I read that, I kept thinking of Nancy Evans Bush, Bush's work uh, where at one point she includes a description of the of the if happening to Teresa of Avila of something like that when she was in deep meditation. That could have easily been a fearful near-death event, but it happened to her in a deep meditative state. So the point I want to make with that description is that uh, people have archetypal encounters and that they have two, archetypes do have two sides. We just heard about the demonic side, and then there is the other side that 
sounds like a very high level spiritual experience. So given that, let's talk about the archetypes. There is an overarching archetype to near-death events. There are several archetypes, but there is one that is all-embracing. Now, if this is going to be an archetype, it has to be present throughout humanity and across cultures and across time. So the archetype that is in near-death experiences that meets all of those criteria is the archetype of death and rebirth. Now think about what we've been hearing here at this, this meeting session, these meeting, during these meetings. The experiencer feels that they have died. Sometimes they've suffered a clinical death, but even if not a clinical death, they certainly have had a metaphorical death. Um, and then let's consider the concept of rebirth. Well, last night we had a long description of the after effects of near-death events. It, they could be summarized as representing a change in actions, different goals, change in values, different interests, different beliefs, different sense of self, a, a, a new, a, perhaps a new belief in the continuation of life after death, decreased fear or perhaps total loss of fear of death, Increase in, uh, increase in psychic abilities. Now, is that the same person or is that a newborn person? So I'm suggesting that near-death experiencers have the experience of the archetype of death and rebirth. Now, where else do we find this archetype of death and rebirth? Well, it's certain, certainly present uh, in antiquity Anthropologists tell us that the primitive people looked out through the structure of, of the archetype of death and rebirth, and they saw the seasonal death and rebirth of plant life in that, in that manner, with the browning and death of the plants, and then the green in the, the coming to be reborn in the spring. And there's many myths, many agricultural myths that center around that. The ancient Egyptians, in their religions, had the death and rebirth concept. Their solar god would be reborn in the morning, traverse the sky, and die into the, heaven, into the uh, earth at night, and then go through the underworld, each time assuming a different name, depending upon the position of where the god was, to be reborn in the morning. Their belief in the death and the after uh, death and rebirth was uh, personified also in their main uh, uh, god Osiris, who was probably the first dying and reviving god. The ancient world also had um, a ritual reenactments of death and rebirth. Uh, they had the ritual um, dying consciously kinds of w weeks of, that are described by the ancient writers who describe them as very, being very powerful events. Um, when I read about them, I, I was impressed, and I thought, well, that's certainly more, uh, more important. I think that would be more important and more impactful than a weekend retreat, as, such as I had attended. Well, anyhow, these rites uh, go, were present in the Greek uh, ancient world, uh, the Ellicinian mystery rites, and then Black Bag of Babylonia had mystery death rites also. So where is this archetype of death and rebirth today other than in near-death experiences? Well, it's in present in all of our, uh, many of our religions. Uh, it's certainly present in what is labeled the, uh, the Abrahamic religions. That would be Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. There is definitely a, a, the aspect of death and rebirth in that part of their theology. It's also present in ten Hinduism and early American Indian religions. Another archetype that's present in near-death events is, of course, the archetypal light. This meeting with the archetypal light, as many of you have said, seems to be the 